As the old saying goes, the kitchen is the heart of the home. And today we are focusing on exactly this. What's going on guys? My name is David Tomich. I'm a registered architect here in Western Australia. And today we're on part seven of this amazing Archicad course where we teach you everything to do with Archicad completely free right here on YouTube. Now to help all of us with residential design, it's important that we follow a set of rules and a set of guidelines. Today, I'm gonna to be using Louis Ferruccio's graphic guide to residential design to help you guys understand every single element. If you want a copy of this book, it is an ebook that I've just printed out. You can grab one down in the description below. So last week, we wrapped up with the ground floor, making sure that our wet areas were all well detailed, as well as a few bedrooms and our games room. Today, we're moving upstairs to the grand spaces, the kitchen, living, and dining areas. Now, obviously, to be respectful to Lewis, I'm not gonna be showing you what's inside his ebook. I'm simply gonna be using what is available to him on his Instagram page, free of charge. If you want to grab his ebook, just simply go to the description and grab a copy for yourselves today. But I can assure you there's some great information here, even some amazing kitchen-shaped designs and circulation spaces for living all little minor things both in the metric and imperial so that we are constantly reminded of good design even when we are struggling to figure out the best practice so enough of that let's dive back into archicad and start figuring out our spaces first of all there's quite a lot of things happening up here we probably want to actually make a master bedroom or some sort of master suite up here so let's hold the option button select one of the walls below and simply just draw one line all the way through. And we can pretend that this right hand side of our entire suite is going to be our master suite. This L shape at the top can remain as our kitchen, living and dining. Now, for the purpose of this, I would kind of envision that the kitchen would either be somewhere along this back corner here or completely concealed behind the stairs on this side now this is a design option a design choice again not really focusing on design in this course more so just about understanding our cad as best as we can so let's start by incorporating just some basic furniture so we'll go to our object tool open up our object and let's use the dining suite again i don't really love the green we can change the colors to whatever we like pressing ok let's just drop a dining room table in for now if we select one of the pink hotspots on the outside of the table, it's going to let us adjust just the table itself. So let's jump across to Lewis's amazing page on Instagram and see what he says about table sizes. So here is a great example of dining table sizes on Instagram that he dictates how big a table should be. Let's say we want an eight person table for one example. He's telling us it needs to be 244 by 107. Let's come back in hit one of these hotspots, 2440, press OK, double check his dimensions because my memory is terrible as I'm talking, and then tap 1070 and OK. Now you can see we have a beautiful eight person dining table. All of our chairs are pushed out. If we click one of the pink hotspots on the chairs, we can push them in a little bit to make it appear exactly as we want it to. So now we have a beautiful table. Let's duplicate that across like we've learned before, open up our settings and type in sofa. Straight away, we have our sofa lounge suite available to us as a favorite in Archicad, which basically showcases a full round set. Now Lewis dictates living room rug sizes in this image for a very particular purpose. I've read through this ebook. I use it quite often now because it is a great reminder and hence why I'm sharing this resource with you guys today. The 2.7 by 3.7 rug size you see in this picture is something that's quite critical to understand. Basically, you don't really want more than a 2.7 meter circle between all of these chairs because you're not gonna be able to hear people conversing and discussing topics of conversation very easily. So if we were to plant a 2.7 by 3.7 meter rug underneath our lounge suite back in ArcCAD, we can do that either in 3D or as a simple 2D diagrammatic expression. For the purpose of this, I don't really wanna to go too far. So I'm just gonna simply come across the fill tool over here. Make sure it's on my right layer as always. Change my geometric method to rectangular. I can select one of my drafting fills. So this is going to allow me to have a lot more options than any of these, which we'll get into later. And then I'm just gonna simply select 25%. 
I'm happy with it being 25% transparent. I don't need it to be 50, 75 or anything else. And I don't need any patterns. So solid color, 25%. Picking my pen color as the background solid fill. Let's just pick a gray and then we don't want anything in the background. We want it to be transparent. Now we can click once, type in 27, type in 37 and we'll have our 27 by 37 rug. Rotating it accordingly and moving it underneath our actual lounge suite. Coming back to this image from Lewis, you'll see that the chairs and the sofa are sitting about halfway past the rug which means we have the freedom to actually extend this out quite a lot. So if we open up our settings for this table and chair, you can see how much space we have, how much width we've got. The way we get around increasing it is by actually increasing the space between each couch. So this couch has about 200 clear. Maybe we want 400, maybe we want a little bit more. Let's type 400, push our chairs out ever so slightly, move center, and we can probably adjust that 450 and we'll be perfectly aligned. So now we have this beautiful space, 2.7 by 3.7 meter rug underneath, very easy distances. So if we measure from the center of this chair to the center of this sofa, it's 2.4 and from the center over here to it's 2.1. Even worst case scenario, talking across the table, which we really, really don't want to be doing is 3.5. So personally speaking, this is not a good conversation point. The person on the right and the person on the left would not be able to manage a conversation without disturbing a conversation happening across these two chairs. So just something to be mindful of if you're picking a space of this size and this caliber. Now let's simply pick up our living room set, drag and drop it down there, redo the same thing with our actual table. And now we can understand that we actually have quite a lot of space. This house is absolutely huge. Now, yes, we could turn this into a theater room or another bedroom or do whatever we like, or we can really create a massive kitchen with a pantry, a walk-in scullery, all sorts of bits and pieces, completely up to you guys, completely up to the architectural expression that you're trying to achieve. So first of all, you have a number of different kitchen shapes and styles. All of them have different forms, functions, and purposes but you'll notice that all of them are articulating a triangle pattern. If I take a screenshot of this and overlay a quick diagram, you'll see it doesn't matter which actual kitchen style we pick, we're always working in that triangle manner, except along the long wall, obviously, because it can't be done. Personally, I really like a gallery kitchen or an island kitchen. So we're gonna be starting with something like this. We're probably going to be using an island kitchen combined with a gallery kitchen to create something a little bit different, a little bit special. So let's start working on that. First of all, what you want to do is create your slab tool. You want to make sure the slab is no longer on the slab general, but on the fixed furniture layer. You want to change it to a rectangle and you want to go command T to open up the settings. Now you could redefine an actual slab composition or you could simply change the actual building material to stone or whatever you like change that from 120 mil to 40 mil which is the average thickness of a bench top if it's porcelain it's about 12 if it's engineered stoned probably about 20 and you can have all sorts of choices while you're here you can immediately change that to a different color let's go white marble and press ok now like i said we have a of room and we want to utilize as much of this as possible so let's start by using this back wall here and that's a six and a half meter island bench which is absolutely huge it does not need to be that big nobody needs an island bench that big so first of all what we're going to do is start typing in 1500 minus so it offsets that wall 1500 from where i've drawn an imaginary wall below and then I want to make it at least 600 millimeters. We go back to Lewis's page. He will tell you generic clearances around kitchens, bench tops, and bits and pieces. He will also tell you the average width of a kitchen island bench. Now, obviously metric and imperial don't convert perfectly across and the codes and regulations in every country and every state are different. So you have to be mindful about this graphic guide. It is simply a guide. For instance, he's telling us that it's 24 inches deep or 61 centimeters. In Australia, the typical kitchen island bench is 600 deep 
or 650 depending on the edging you have. Now I'm talking millimeters, 600 millimeters, which is 60 centimeters, or 65 centimeters, which is 650 millimeters, whereas the island is about 900. So these measurements and conversion changeovers aren't exactly perfect, but they're a great starting point and a great guide for everybody. I'm happy with the bench top being that far across the back, and then I wanna duplicate this bench top in line with the existing one. What I'll then do is move it. I personally like to move it 1550 millimeters because we have the row. And then I also want to adjust the edge of this 1550. Now, the reason I use 1550 is because this is an Australian disability compliance standard. It allows two people to walk through. It allows anybody in a wheelchair to move around quite freely. And if you have the space, it's highly recommended. If you don't have the space, bring it back into about 1200, 1250, and you'll be happy as well. Anything under that is a little bit tight, a little bit claustrophobic, and probably more a one person kitchen. We then want to grab one of these edges and extend it out 300 millimeters to create our island bench. So as you can see, our kitchen is starting to take shape. We have our back bench across here, we have our island bench here, and we have a ton of space on the left-hand side. You might be thinking, what are we gonna do with all of this space? Well, I actually wanna create something magical and something special at the back here, almost like a chef's kitchen. First of all, what I'm gonna do is simply highlight that kitchen bench top, drag and drop to start creating a new little zone. Now, this zone is simply gonna be 600 wide and 1550 short off that side. And I'm also gonna make it 1550 short off this side. So now we've created a little island in the middle. So when anybody needs to access this space, they can access it from both sides. If we wanted to close off this side with some sort of pantry or cabinetry, or even some storage for cups and plates, displays, whatever we could, and then we could only access it from one side. But for this, I'm gonna create this as a zone. This is going to be my fridge and my oven zone, which we'll get back to in a second. What we then want to do is basically create our pantry in the back space. So if we come to our object tool, open up our object settings, type in linen, you'll get your basic linen cabinetry. Now I use linen cabinetry in this one because it's got a number of shelves and that's what typical pantries have as well. So it's a great little object to use for the purpose of this. There's no need to bore you with this sort of stuff. So I'm simply going to drag and drop it in and adjusted to create a little space. Okay, so now what I've done is quickly imported a few little walls, a couple doors, and readjusted my shelving. What I have is two L-shaped shelves on the rear wall, two I-shaped shelves in the middle, so you basically create a full walk-in pantry. It is massive. You could last months and months and months in this pantry. An overkill for a three-bedroom house, but again, not really a design tutorial. It is just simply throwing ideas out there and getting things to work. We have our huge kitchen on this side and what I've actually done is incorrect there. I need that cabinetry so the wall is on the back side. As I continue to think about it, I do personally believe that it would be better to close off that side, close off that side and redefine these spaces as maybe something a little bit more simple, a little bit more practical. So now what we have, I now have shapes gallery in the back a full walk around pantry, just like we had before. Again, complete overkill, way too big, and fridges and freezers here. So what we now need to do is simply drop in a few items. Let's copy this table across. Let's type in sink and see what we have available to us. We'll search our full active library, and I'll try to not pick a 4D sink for you guys. Typically, I'd pick something like this because it's very common in Australia. It is a great sink, but let's go sink general purpose 26. Let's use style 14 is phenomenal. Let's simply drop in a tap, press OK, rotate that to where we want it. And let's say we want to put the sink over here as one. We want another copy over here in the scullery. So let's drop a secondary sink down here in the scullery. Now we want to copy paste that across once again. Let's type in oven. Now, like I said, we do want an oven. We probably want something like an oven stack cabinetry. You can download that from Graphisoft and embed it. Ideally, I'd use the 4D stack, but for the purpose of this, let's download, embed, press okay to drop that one in, rotate it around. And let's say we want two oven stacks. The third, we want to be our fridge. I'll simply grab this stainless side-by-side -side double door fridge and import it into ArchiCAD. Press OK, relocate it to where we need it to be. Type in cabinet, 
see what we have available to us. We probably want a tall standing cabinet, so that stack cabinet will be great. Drag and drop it in once again, and let's just duplicate it a couple of times. Extend that one larger, delete our slab below. If I quickly come into 3D, you see that obviously we have no slab between our floors. So first of all, let's jump back to our first floor, press command down, right click on our first floor, show us trace, come to slab, change our slab structure. So we want it to be something a little bit thicker. Let's go 300 mil suspended timber floor and let's just change that to some form of timber. Timber pine's fine. Make sure it's on the right layer and trace around the perimeter as we've done before. So now when we come back into 3D, you'll see that slab has appeared. It's on, it's not positioned correctly, so drag it up simply. Take a quick look at what's going on. Our slabs are way too low. So we select our slabs, let's lift them up 900 mil. And you can see we've got a kitchen starting, we've got the bench tops, our sinks. We've got our pantry in the rear, our scullery and we could continue to add little bits and pieces. So we could go back in, add cabinets underneath the island bench, add cabinets across here, add overhead cupboards, introduce one or two or even three more windows in the background, and we would be able to call this a day. And there we are, drag dropped a few more little cabinets, a few more little pantries, slow overhead cupboards, dropped in three windows across the back, a little splashback window in the center as well, and we've created most of our kitchen living dining space. Obviously, we need to drag in our stairs as well, as well as create our master ensuite. So what I'll do is I'll create this master ensuite ahead of time, available to you guys to download through the Patreon link down below. Sign up Patreon, you can grab it through the Discord chat. All of these PLN files are available through Patreon and through Discord. So if you want to grab the PLN with the master suite completely finished, you can grab it. Otherwise, you'll see the design in the next tutorial. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I've almost finished my coffee, which means it's time to go and enjoy the weekend. If you love this video, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below if you want to see more of this ArcCAD course. It's available to the playlist to the side of me. But like I said, that is all for me today, so I'll see you next Monday.